Hi, I'm Big Ben, and welcome to this week's episode of Equip Tips. We've left our, our proud studio at Picture Line, and we've come out into the field for an object lesson and demonstration on camera sensors. You might recall our lesson of the histogram and how we are talking of underexposing an image and overexposing an, an, an image. You might have recalled our histogram of when we were talking about getting our pixels within the range of our camera and not underexposing an image or overexposing an image. So here we have what this would be the sensor in the back of your camera. And we have a bunch of paper cups here filled with colored water. So picture that this table is your camera sensor and all these paper cups are the photo cells on the back of your sensor. Instead of film, on a camera sensor, you have pixels and photo cells, and each photo cell is like one of these plastic cups. It is an empty vessel. Picture as an empty cup that can receive information. That information that is going to pour in these cups is the information coming from when you take a photo. So when you click your shutter, all that information of that tree or that model or that wedding or the sunny, the, the happy waterfall, all that's going to come in here and fill each of these pixels correspond, corresponding to where they're located when you snap the picture. Here's the problem with the photo cell. Just like any glass, it can overflow, it can have a hole in it, it cannot record the information. So if we were to overexpose our image, like we were talking on our histogram, all this information that we're going to pour is going to start overflowing our sensor. So if we start overflowing the information, we are now, if we start overfilling these photo cells, we are now losing information we have overexposed our image. These photo cells have reached a point to where there's so much overflowing out of it, that information, that's, this might look like spilt red, green, and blue water, but you have lost that information. This might have been the highlight of someone's hair. This might have been the white wedding dress. If you're taking a photo of me, it might have been the highlights in this lab coat. You have now lost that information. The photo cell can only hold so much and now it is overflowed and there's no more room in that photo cell there is no more room in that cup to hold that picture to hold that information so if we are to expose something correctly we are keeping these cups with information in them but we're not losing so much information that we are overflowing and causing us to lose information now, what happens when we underexpose an image? Just like overexposing, underexposing, it's just like having, so our photo cell is now empty. It's sitting on the back of our sensor, and we are waiting for it to be filled with information. We snap our photo. Here comes the information. The aperture opens, the shutter curtain flies, the mirror moves out of the way, and we are now filling our photo cell with information. Well, if we were to underexpose our image, we would not gather enough information for the cup to even notice there's any there. In this case, we have now underexposed our image, and there is no information in that photo cell. There is nothing there for it to record. It's just going to be straight black. And if we were to overexpose our image, we are putting so much information into there Here's the light pouring in. It's pouring in from our camera. Here's the highlights of the wedding dress. It is now going to overflow, and now we have lost that information as it spilled out of that cup. So why are these red and green and blue? Because that's how our camera shoots is RGB, right? Red, green, and blue, the primary colors. So the important thing is, is to pay attention to your histogram. Make sure that you are not overexposing or underexposing the sensor of your camera. Unlike film, the sensors in our cameras have less dynamic range, meaning these things will fill up a lot faster or they won't fill up fast enough. Like film, film gives us, imagine film, in film we have a cup, imagine each of these paper cups the size of this bucket. That's film sensor right there. That is the, the range of film where we can 
add all these. This is one photo frame, one sensor, one photo cell, pardon me, and we are filling it up with information. And it's going to take a lot of information before we overexpose this image and lose that information and overflow it. But again, with our digital cameras, we don't have that range. We are dealing with the photo cell the size of this cup versus the size of this bucket. And when we're dealing with that, we got to be more careful so we don't lose our information or not capture enough information to record an image. Hope this makes sense to you. Email me with your questions. I'm Big Ben with Framed Equip Tips and check us out next week as we go back to the lab.